It's time for The Story Behind the Person, featuring lively, in-depth conversation with compelling guests from our community. And here is our host, Jonathan Van Bilsen. Hello and welcome to this episode. My guest today is Tina De Bruin. She's the chair of the board of directors for the Port Perry Hospital Foundation. We'll learn all about the wonderful projects and successful events that this organization has been involved in, as well as get a glimpse into the life of Ms. De Bruin her accomplishments, and her involvement in the community. We'll be right back after these messages. Top care with top stylists. Book your next hair appointment with Port Perry's award-winning hair salon, Rosario Greco Styles. The hair experience you deserve. Book today. Call 905-985-0099. Hello and welcome back. As I mentioned, my guest is Trina De Bruyne. She is the chair of the Port Perry Hospital Foundation. Trina, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. So I know the Port Perry Hospital yeah. and the foundation do a lot of things for this community. I think a lot of people are not familiar with everything that they do. So I thought it would be good to have you as a guest and sort of explain exactly what it is that that happens, okay? So the first question I have is, is what exactly is the Hospital Foundation? Well, thank you. So the Port Perry Hospital Foundation is the fundraising arm for the Port Perry uh, Lake Ridge Health Hospital. We raise funds to support medical uh, needs at the hospital, whether that be equipment, renovations, um, and patient care, and also um, needs for our physicians. So it is governed by a board of directors, okay, and we have a small staff of two. Okay. So... Now, doesn't OHIP cover a lot of these costs? (laughs) I wish. (laughs) Unfortunately, no. A lot of the uh, major capital items, okay, are the responsibility of um, fundraising efforts. Really? Yeah. Most people don't know that. We don't necessarily report to the hospital, but we do work very closely with Lake Ridge Health. Right. So anytime that Lake Ridge Health comes to us with a request for fundraising, mm-hmm. we work very, very closely okay. with Lake Ridge Health. So they help support us in things like uh, purchasing mm-hmm. products, determining what's needed, right? You know, and just helping us make connections where mm-hmm. needed. So we have a very good working relationship with uh, Lake Ridge Health. Okay, and you say Lake Ridge Health now. Um, you're you're primarily uh, focused on Port Perry Hospital, correct? correct. So Lake Ridge Health is also Oshawa and Bowmanville. So do you work in conjunction with those foundations as well? Well, our foundations are separate from one another. Okay. Okay. But we do share um, a lot of information with one another. And our CEOs of our hospital foundations do work rather closely with one another. We also have regular meetings as hospital foundations, um, as as with the chairs of the other hospital foundations. And we talk about things that may be beyond the scope of just Port Perry and may affect all of Durham region. So would that be like ambulatory care or something like that or? A lot of it comes back to bigger needs, maybe around a new hospital. Oh, okay. You know, that right. might be um, plans for right. our various hospitals. Right. Um, long-term plans around, you know, what services may be provided um, or where hospitals are located, things like that. Right, right, of course. Um, so <clears throat> now there's also the hospital auxiliary, which I keep hearing about, which and they, they mm-hmm. also raise money because they have a, a used clothing store. They they have a shop in the hospital, I believe. They, they do. do. So... so how is that different from the foundation? So the hospital auxiliary is a fantastic dedicated army of volunteers. Mm-hmm. They fundraise okay, for our hospital okay. and they help um, our foundation as well um, okay. by char- making charitable donations to the foundation okay. from all of their events, um, whether it be through the um, clothing store, whether it be from the little auxiliary store, they do things like tag days, they raise money. Right, right, right. I do remember (laughs) that. That's right. So so they raise the money and then then they give it in part to the foundation that then goes out and buys big big toys with it. (laughs) We couldn't do it without them. So we are very fortunate to have these. You said an army. I know your foundation has two employees, but the auxiliary has 
a lot, right? Correct. Like, like we're talking 50, 60, if not They have more. a lot of very yeah. dedicated uh, volunteers that right. we are very fortunate to be in our community, so. <laughs> Maybe we can flash the uh, website for the auxiliary up on the screen, so mm -hmm. if people want to donate, I'm sure you're always looking for uh, either donations or oh, for people to- all the uh, time. <laughs> to, to get involved, exactly. Exactly. So when was the foundation established, roughly? So my understanding, I wasn't around at that time. Right, neither but was I. <laughs> I understand it was um, in the late 70s, so okay. around um, 1976 approximately. Okay. And uh, it was founded for the purpose that it is today. Right. Okay, which was to support the medical needs of our community. So what did they do before that? So, so let, let's say that they needed a new, I don't know, pick something, a new slew of beds. And, and the Ministry of Health said, no, 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 you're, you're not ready for it for another 20 years or whatever. And what did they do? They just put up with? Well, my understanding was before the hospital mm -hmm. foundations, there was a different funding structure I see. and different okay. models that were in place. Okay. So I'm not entirely certain what happened before the foundations, right. you know, came on board. But I believe, you know, there was different, you know, like I say, different financing models right. that were in place back then. So. Okay. And it, it was established, I suppose, I, I imagine, to give some sort of continuity to the entire fundraising Correct. issue. And we're talking tons of dollars here, right? So I'm sure there's a lot of checks and balances in place as well. Absolutely. So um, <laughs> We I, have a very, you know, dedicated and uh, a board of right. directors who each bring a different skill set. So let's talk a little know, bit about the, the board. <clears throat> How many people are on the board? We have a total of nine, not okay. including our staff. Okay. So um, each, again, brings a certain skill set to the right. board, and we're all made of community, community okay. members. And you have some physicians on there too, or a physician, right? Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah. So Dr. Mark Adams right. is our current physician, okay. um, who's on our, our board of directors. Okay, and how long is your term as chair? Is it chair chair or president? No, nope, chair. chair. Okay. <laughs> so my term is two years. I am the current chair, and mm -hmm. um, I will be um, stepping down and moving to past chair in okay. September. Okay. Um, so um, the incoming chair is Kim Coates. Okay. Our past chair is Mark Fletcher. Right. And then uh, we also have a treasurer, which is Lisa Kelly. Okay. And then we have um, some board members such as um, Don Gordon. Right. I hope I don't forget anybody. <laughs> um, uh, Tanya Latrell, okay. uh, Dr. Mark Adams. Right. We have Doug Brown, uh, right. Sue Bradley, uh, Chris Hall. Okay. Did I get to nine? I hope so. <laughs> Close enough. Close enough. We do apologize. Don if, Gordon. I don't want to forget uh, Don. Uh, and Sue Yeah, Don was a former C C A O of the township. That's correct. Right? He was. Yeah. So the 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 roles of the board differ from the staff, right? Do I can I assume that the staff looks after the day to day function, reports to the board, and the board sort of does the thirty thousand view decision making? Is that correct? Yes, mostly yes. So our staff, we have a staff of two. Mm -hmm. So our CEO, um, Rachel Agnaluzzi, right. and our communications coordinator, Meg um, Shanks. Okay. And they take care of the day-to-day -day operations. You know, they are very involved right. in um, fundraising, meeting with our donors, um, you know, so yeah. much down to, you know, giving receipts for donations. Right. So our board of directors, we're more of a governance role. Okay. And government's an advisory. Right. Everyone's very dedicated and gives a ton of their time, you know, right. to help support because we do have a very small found, you know, foundation right. staff. Right. Um, so yeah, we the board provides, you know, sort of more governance and advisory. Right. Excellent. And and the uh, staff are based out of the hospital. That Correct. Group? Okay. Yeah. After okay. during the pandemic, you know, there was. Um, as with most companies, <laughs> there yeah. was a bit of switching, you, you know, working from home. And, <laughs> um, but for the most part, yes, we're now back in the uh, hospital and we right. have our um, offices okay. located within the hospital. Excellent. The board um, meets, what, once a month kind of thing, once every couple of months, every week? So, sort of thing. <laughs> well, most of the time we meet every month. We have a monthly meeting, mm -hmm. but we also have subcommittees of the board right. for various things. So the meetings, you know, could be um, as needed. Right. You know, sometimes we have um, a committee for, let's say recruitment or a committee for a garden project right. or, you know, so those meetings are a little more frequently. Right. right, But the board itself tends to meet monthly. Okay, that's fair. I guess most boards do that, right? Yeah. 
So <clears throat> some of the some of the things that the foundation has accomplished, I know the very one of the very first items <clears throat> that you you folks put together was the Matthew B. Diamond Wing, um, which I understand is now part of the Emerge That's uh, correct. system. <laughs> and so that was um, that that was sort of the, the kickstart. And, and Matthew B. Diamond was a physician in Port Perry, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. I'm going back to. Uh, <laughs> That's be- my understanding. Before I was born. Um, <laughs> and then you you moved ahead with the, the um, Roman wing, the Stephen B. Roman wing, which which my understanding was was back in the 90s, there was a shooting in Port Perry, a bank robbery, and people were injured. And the Roman wing had just opened, which was a godsend because they were able to transport the injured people there rather than take them to uh, Uxbridge Cottage or uh, Oshawa or anything like that. Well, I'm glad so, to hear we were there yeah, and absolutely. the hospital, uh, the emergency department was there. I think that's a little bit before my time. Long before you were born, no <laughs> doubt. No doubt. Um, but I have heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I also understand that that was, uh, the money they raised for that was $2.9 million, which which is pretty impressive back in the, absolutely. In the 1980s or 90s, whenever, whenever that took place, right? And I believe there was a really big donation um, from uh, Mr. Roman's family. Is that right? Because I don't know who he is, actually. I don't know if you know or not. But I'm sorry, no, I don't. No, I, I'm I not don't sure. I've never. We'll have to find that out. I think. <laughs> yeah. I think. You I never know, thought to ask, but I should. They're going to give us uh, three million dollars and build half the hospital after. We should find out who he is. We'll do that. <laughs> we'll do that. The new life center was a big, big Absolutely. addition, right? And is that exactly what it sounds like—a place where people give birth? It is, so, and it's very near and dear to mm-hmm. most of our our community. It's, uh, I know my own children were both born Is at the right? New Life Center. Wow. So it's, uh, it's deeply embedded in, in our, wow. our caring in our community. How many do you have? How many kids do you have? I have two. Two? Two boys. Oh, wonderful. So, um, so what was, like, was there an old Life Center? Like, or what happened? Uh, again, just... I'm not really sure. Okay. I just know that when the New Life Center mm-hmm. was, um, I guess, introduced, okay, it um, was, staffed and it was a lot of community donations right okay went into um the artwork and right and i heard that i heard all the furniture and that was built by local craftsmen and yes. all the artwork as well and it's interesting because the um the government has now changed the rules you cannot just hang a piece of art in a wall anymore it has to be specific um materials and that that's that don't right. absorb bacteria and and all kinds of stuff so so that, that that's quite interesting you also have an endoscopy suite that was was paid for by the foundation, correct? Correct. That was part of our Lighting the Way campaign. And it's a critical scope equipment that's still used today in patient okay. care. And Lighting the Way is what? It was a major campaign and that was the name that was chosen. Okay. And then from what I understand, there is a significant part of the endoscopy equipment which has a light on it. So I see. it was called Lighting the Way. It's an area we're not going to get into in, in, in depth. And I'm going to stop you right there because we do have to take a break. Okay. I'd love to hear more about this when we come back. So please stay tuned. We'll be back right after these commercials. It's about your brand, and at PP Print, we can help create promotional products and apparel that will put you above your competition. PP Print, more than just print. At Voss, your independent grocer, it's all about hometown living and shopping. Owned and operated by Port Perry's own Terry and Christine Voss, the independent grocer carries many local items to support our town and its residents. Welcome back. My guest today is Trina De Bruyne. She is the chair of the Port Perry Hospital Foundation. We've learned a lot of interesting things. Trina, I wanted to ask a little bit about you as a person rather than you as the chair. So how did you get into the Hospital Foundation? Right. Well, that's an interesting story. So uh, previous to uh, Rachel Agnaluzzi as her CAO, the mm-hmm. former CAO, or CAO, sorry, right, right, right. <laughs> um, contacted me when I worked at the Township of Scugog right. and asked me if I would be interested in joining the board. So as a community member, um, the hospital was near and dear to my heart. Of course. So I uh, gladly came on board and that was in 2000 and. 15. Oh, so you've been at this for quite a while. Yes, yeah, so uh, and I started as a general board of directors and then uh, I moved to the treasurer position. 
Okay. Then I move to the incoming chair position, right. the chair position. And then in September, I'll be stepping down and moving to the past chair position. Ah, so you said you you worked for the Skuga Township. Now, your role was financial, correct? You were correct. the treasurer, were you? Or? Yeah, I was the director of finance and okay. treasurer uh, for the township of Skugog. Okay. And I was in that role for about uh, 10 years. And I understand you just came back from Europe. Like I literally did. just, like <laughs> I two, did. Uh, two days ago, a day ago. <laughs> So you, you must be a little jet lag. Are you still waking up at three in the morning? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I keep waking up at three, five. And you mentioned just before we went on the air, it was interesting. You mentioned that that part of the reason you went was your son is really interested into World War II history. So you did the entire French Normandy uh, area where where um, a lot of of history took place in World War II, right? Correct. Yeah, my youngest son, he had a. Mm -hmm. uh, um, an interest in World War One, World War Two history. Right. So we uh, traveled to Normandy, um, toured around, you know, the Juno and Omaha right. beaches. And that must have been emotional, yeah. It was very emotional. Yeah. Extremely emotional. Then we went from there to Vimy Ridge. Okay. And uh, toured Vimy Ridge. Wow. Um, went to a few places in between, and then ended up in uh, Poland at the end. Really? Yes. Poland's a beautiful country. Where about were you in Poland? In Warsaw. We or? went to um, Krakow and right. Warsaw. But I found Poland to be one of those countries that that's underrated. You don't hear a lot about it, but when you get there, it's just spectacular. It's Warsaw beautiful. is a beautiful city. It's been totally beautiful. rebuilt, right? Totally rebuilt. And you also went to Amsterdam, you said? I didn't did. want to leave out the Dutch. You know, this is very important, near and dear to my heart. <laughs> I but, did, um, and enjoyed some, uh, some and, good, uh, you know, Dutch food. You, you're obviously an extremely busy person because the Hospital Foundation must keep you hopping. Your job as, as Treasurer or Finance uh, Director at, at your, your real full-time job <laughs> must really keep you hopping, too. So, it, it definitely does. And you got two kids and a husband that you're trying to keep keep them <laughs> in line right. too, no doubt, right? <laughs> it's, well, a, it's a busy uh, time of life, but I'm enjoying it immensely. And that's the key. So. That's the key. So after you you're, you're, do your year as, or two years as past president, do you plan to stay on the foundation or is that too far out to... Well, oh. I'm not entirely certain yet. We do have um, limits around um, board members, you know, okay. time on the board. So um, it may be that I step down for right. a little while. Yep. And then if the board, you know, would ask, right. you know, I would consider, yeah. you know, coming back. It's been an um, incredibly rewarding right. experience for me to be part of the Hospital yeah. Foundation. Oh, I'm sure so. it would be. I mean, the things that you've accomplished, I wanted to talk about that because one of the biggest and bestest things that I've ever heard of is a brand new CT scanner that we're getting in Port Perry. Super excited about it. <laughs> no kidding. And that cost around, well, the, the fundraising was about $4 million for that, right? Correct. And you, you, um, you went more than that, way beyond that, right? Yes, we were, you know, our community rallied around us. Right. And we're so generous. And we raised over $4 million. Right. And we raised it in unprecedented time. That's, we thought yeah. this campaign was going to last us a couple of years. Um, but in a very short, you know, yeah. six, seven months, you know, we, we, we met our goal and exceeded our goal. I know. Well, North, North Durham just blows me away with, with their, even when, when we were looking to raise money for the Syrian ref, refugees, mm -hmm. like there was just boom. It just went like crazy and, and we managed to get a couple of families in. So the CT scanner now, it's new or it's used? It's brand new. Brand spanking new. <laughs> and is it here already? No, I wish. Okay. <laughs> I'm not the most patient of persons. Yeah. So I, I wish it was here, um, but it is, um, th we've completed the RFP. Right. Um, uh, and the equipment is being... Put together? Put together is right now as <laughs> it speaks from so, what I've heard. So where does it come from? Who builds these things? It's a major uh, company, I believe, a uh, major medical equipment mm -hmm. company. Um, I think they have um, locations in all right. various parts of the world. So, okay. um, but it was, we worked very closely with Lake Ridge Health, right. you know, to choose um, the type of equipment. Right. We met with many doctors. Uh, there was a lot of stakeholder involvement. Right, I can, I can um, imagine. To choose the piece of equipment. Um, we have to do a little bit of renovations at the hospital. Right, to make to it fit. To allow the equipment in. Yeah. And um, yeah, again, um, we did exceed our our timelines. Right. We thought it was going to be. So right. now so we you have extra have money. Now, well, now we got to wait you, to, for the equipment to come. Right. And the pandemic hasn't helped. No, of course. I think of most course. people can attest to, you know. Do you know what the shortages. timeline is? We're hoping by the end of the year. 
Okay, so when you receive it, is it pretty well up and running then, or does it take another six months to get? So when we receive it, there is going to be, um, you know, some staff training time right. involved. You know, um, some uh, again, the renovations have to be complete. Right. But then the equipment should hopefully shortly after right. received will be up and running. Yeah. Did you buy an extended warranty on it? <laughs> <laughs> so, so. So my understanding is the $4 million, give or take, will pay for the machine. Now, you need special people to operate it. Is that something that's covered by, by uh, the government or is that also uh, funded through, through right. the foundation? No, so fortunately, okay, our Lake Ridge Health um, mm -hmm. has doctors who are experienced on this type okay. of equipment, okay? Right. And uh, they'll be able to um, transition and, and to okay. uh, using the equipment at our at our hospital. Right. So that is covered um, by provincial um, and federal uh, okay. hospitals found funding. Right, <laughs> we right. don't we don't pay yes. for staffing. Oh good. The okay. hospital foundation itself, we fundraise for equipment. And then the operational is handled by Correct. By, I, I want to say OHIP, but I, I don't think that's a proper term, but the government basically yes, Ministry exactly. of Health. Ministry of Health. Ministry right. of Health. This is exciting. I, I'm really excited. Little Port Perry actually has a CT scanner coming. I'm you know? super excited. It's yeah. going to enhance the level of service that we are able to provide. Absolutely. You know, to our residents, to our community. Right. Um, it's going to be used in so many different areas. Yeah. You know, and, and it could save a life. Oh, absolutely. Totally. totally. Shorten the time and, for care. And the comfort, too. I, I remember the story that Brent Harrington tells many times. Brent is the... Uh, the person who owns uh, Harrington Quality Butchers in Port mm -hmm. Perry. And he woke up in the middle of the night and he wasn't feeling well at all. So he went to the hospital, to the eMERGE, and it was determined he needed a CT scan. So they put him into an ambulance and he said it was the worst ride of his life. Mm -hmm. And right after that, when he came back, he was, and thankfully he's fine, he started a campaign right. to, to raise money for the uh, CT scanner and did, did very, very well. I forget what the campaign was. Call, for goodness sake. For goodness sake, that's right. <laughs> Leave it to Brent to come up with, with the, um, with the uh, proper terminology. Mean? Yeah, And that kind of stuff, just, just I find that amazing that people will go to that extent, you know, to, to, to raise money. What other methods of fundraising have you done for, we'll say for the scanner, because that's been the, the recent sure. thrust, right? So, um, so for the scanner itself, um, we were very fortunate to have a large donation um, from our ladies auxiliary. Right. Okay. Uh, I'd heard had, that they they gave a ton of money yes, for that. Yes, they have. Right. We've had several local families, mm -hmm. okay, um, contribute. Right. You know, uh, many organizations. So there's been you know many community events held. Right. You know, we're so fortunate that our community rallies around us. Well, there's always something to do here, right? Exactly. There's always something to do. So, <laughs> so when you say um, some some community events, are you talking about the like the what's it called, the Tour de Scugog, where where exactly. you did a little bicycle races, which which is something that fortunately I'm away this year. I was away <laughs> last year when that happened because I fell off the bike the year before, mm -hmm. which is embarrassing. Um, so those kind of events, and that that's put on by the United Way, is it or? My understanding that was a committee okay. um, uh, that was formed uh, through. I'm not sure which okay. our community, but it was outside of the foundation, yes, right? Yes, it was so, outside yeah. the the, your, the foundation itself because we only have a staff of two. Right. We don't do community fundraising right. events right. ourselves, so we rely on our community partners. Right. To hold the events and uh, then to pass the funds on to us as uh, donations. Right. So uh, there's been, for the CT scanner, you know, as the bike um, rally that you right, mentioned, right. the uh, road, um, I, the, the name's just gone out of my head, I'm sorry. Right. That's right. There's the Roar <laughs> by the Shore too, right? Correct. That, that was done. That's right. There's and the Roar by the Shore, which is an annual event. Right. There was a fundraising dinner. And the Roar by the Shore, for those who don't know, is, is a whole bunch of old cars coming into Port Perry and people walk around and, and there's thousands of people in town checking out cars that they really wish they could own. That's right. And yeah. that's put on or organized um, by um, a gentleman, um, his name's Dave Ralston. Right. And Tony Jansen. Right. And other community volunteers as well of course so we're yep. and um and then you had uh you, do you have other uh um things for fundraising planned um well locally we're again we luckily we have um a local um poker 
Okay. Uh, uh, it's kind of a car and, right. and poker rally. It's, it's like a car rally w- with right. using poker concept. Yeah. 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 That's organized yeah. by a, a local gentleman named Dave Ballingall. Okay. Uh, he does it annually for us. He also there's, does the antique car sh- uh, I believe he club does. or something, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah. I yeah. believe he does. Yeah. Then there's also the um, annual Dragon Boat races. Okay, okay. Right. Of course. Um, big, big thing. Which have raised tens of thousands of dollars for right. us. Yeah. There's uh, Dana's Goldsmithing. There's right. so many. I'm going to miss a billion. You know. I know. I know. And it's it's difficult. And, and I think we're, we're very grateful as a community to anybody who offers to, to fundraise and raise money. Dana um, does the snowflake, right? Every Correct. year she, she designs and produces snowflakes. I, I have a couple of them. They're and gorgeous. They're spectacular. They're amazing. And, and all of the proceeds go to the foundation, which is great. So... <clears throat> Now that you're, you've got the money, you've got the scanner on order, you've got a little bit ex- excess cash, what are you going to buy next? <laughs> well, we're not uh, entirely sure what the long-term plans are. Okay. We're really focused on getting the CT scanner right. in and getting it up and running. But one of the major projects we are working on uh, right now is um, the gardens right. at our inpatient ward area. I did hear that. Yeah, they're yeah. pretty... Um, they need a little attention after they the pandemic, They need a little right? attention after a number yep. of years, yes. Trina, I'm going to have to stop you. Unfortunately, our time is up. It goes really, really quickly. It's a very, very interesting subject. I've learned a lot, a lot that I didn't realize that, that you folks do. Congratulations to you, your board, you. your staff, and everything that the foundation accomplishes. I want to thank you all for watching. Please join us every month to find out the story behind the person right here on Rogers TV.